Hello everyone, this is Mike and welcome to F2F Tech. Now Crytek recently released their Neon Noir Ray Tracing benchmark. Now one thing really neat about this is that it uses only DirectX 11. So it does not require any dedicated ray tracing hardware, no DXR or Vulkan. So in short, this is a pure software based solution running on just the shader hardware. So being that this benchmark is DirectX 11 capable, it's only natural that I test some older DirectX 11 capable cards to see how they stack up. If you're interested in learning more about the technology used in this demo, I would highly recommend you check out Alex's video over on Digital Foundry. So with all that being said, let's take a look at today's test system and the cards we use in all of our benchmarking. The FSP CMT520 Plus is a full-featured mid-tower case that comes with four ARGB fans, front and side tempered glass panels, and has support for extended ATX motherboards. And for those of you who want to add RGB to an older PC, FSP includes a built-in RGB controller so you can change the lighting mode at the case I.O. No need for an RGB compatible motherboard or software. See the video's description to learn more. So for today's test system, we are using a brand new one. Gone is the 5820K, and now we have the Core i7-8700K overclocked to 4.8 GHz. It's running on a Gigabyte Z370 XP SLI motherboard with 16 GB of DDR4, a 512GB NVMe drive, and you can see the rest here along with the operating system and the drivers. You can run this demo in multiple resolutions and a couple different settings for ray tracing. A lot of these cards did default to the 1366 by 768 resolution and with the ultra setting for ray tracing. So I kept everything at default and ran everything through the tests. Now, since these cards I'm testing are rather old, testing them in 1080p or higher is pretty much pointless. Um, some of these cards, as you'll see, are pretty much a slideshow even with these settings. So we're just gonna stick to this and, uh, and go from there. So with that being said, let's take a look at today's first two contenders and they are the DirectX 11 OG cards. First up is the HD 5870. Now this is the Asus Matrix Platinum variant, which is one of the better 5870s that came out. This one does have two gigabytes of VRAM, so it's definitely a leg up compared to the reference model and the core clocks are slightly higher as well. Now we will be comparing this to a bone stock reference GTX 480, which is, uh, it's not really a whole lot to say about this thing that um, I haven't already said, but it is, it is the first Fermi ever released and uh, still holds up decently today, even with that 1.5 gigabytes of VRAM. So with all the cards tested today, well, we will be showing you a side by side. And so you have a good idea of what these cards are, or how these cards perform in real time. Uh, showing you VRAM utilization, GPU usage, uh, core clock speeds and frame times and a number of other things that you'll see here on the MSI uh, OSD. I also want to mention all the video was captured externally with an Aver media device. So there's no performance penalty whatsoever. Now, as you see here with the 5870, even with the two gigabytes of VRAM, it just was not enough to keep up with the GTX 480. The 5870 scored 1,009, while the GTX 480 scored 1,497 points. So it's a clear victory for the GTX 480. Next, we have the HD 6950. Now, for this specific model, I did switch it to the second BIOS switch and unlocked all of the shaders. So it does have 1,536 shaders, just like the 6970. And then I went ahead and increased the power limit and made sure the core clocks and memory clocks uh, equal those of a 6970. So it should theoretically be a 6970 when comparing it to the Beastly GTX 580 that we have here. Now this is a classified version, so it's obviously overclocked from the factory. It also has three gigabytes of VRAM, so it's probably one of the better GTX 580s you really could compare it to. So it might seem a little unfair, but it's what I have. Well, I wish I had some better uh, news to report here on the uh, HT6950, but unfortunately, the Cayman-based card just couldn't keep up with the uh, Beastly Fermi. The score for the 6950 was 1022, while the GTX 580 was at 1946 points. So that's almost double, which is pretty much uh, crushing it uh, to the core. As you can see, VRAM utilization for both cards are completely maxed out 
and uh, we'll, we'll further investigate that here uh, in a little bit. Okay, so it's time to move away from Terrascale and Fermi. Let's take a look at some Tahiti and Kepler. Uh, starting things off with the baby Kepler, we have the GTX 670 for the win. This is a two gigabyte card, and if you look at some older reviews, it's pretty much on par with a stock GTX 680. And we're pairing this up against the HD 7970 gigahertz edition. Now this is pretty much the fastest fully unlocked Tahiti chip that was released. I've done plenty of videos on it and as you know, it, uh, it rocks. So let's see how these guys compare. So as you can see, AMD strikes back in this one with the 7970 completely laying the smackdown on the GTX 670. Now the 7970 gigahertz scored a total of 4276, while the GTX 670 scored 2986. So that is quite the gap in performance. Now for this next one, I wish I had some better comparable cards, but this is what I have. So let's compare Big Kepler to Granada which is uh, pretty much Hawaii for the most part. So this is the first card is the R9 390. This card has a full eight gigabytes of VRAM and it um, has a pretty crappy gigabyte cooler, but it did run at its full clock speeds or full boost clock speeds during the entire run. Now we will be comparing this to the GTX 780 Lightning, which is one of the best 780s you can get. This one does boost to around 1100 megahertz out of the box, so it's definitely a better showing for the uh, 780, but it does have uh, less than half the VRAM of the 390. So let's see how these guys compete. So I did find this one to be pretty surprising. I expected the 390 to completely lay the smackdown on the 780 in this one, especially since it has a lot more VRAM. Um, but that wasn't necessarily the case. You can see the scores are very close. The 390 came in at 5,441, while the 780 came in at 5,301. Uh, you can also see VRAM utilization on the 390 did peak around 4.4, 4.5 gigabytes. So that's pretty much what this benchmark uses um, at this resolution and setting. So uh, still a good showing for the 780, but the 390 did narrowly uh, beat it out. Now it's kind of a uh, bonus round. I wanted to take an older uh, GCN based card such as the uh, HD 7790. Now this is actually a Bon Air based card and this only has one gigabyte of VRAM. Now I wanted to compare this to the integrated GPU in the 8700K. So it's the UHD 630. Uh, the Intel based graphics does have 24 execution units and does boost to about 1200 megahertz and obviously uses the system memory. So let's see how these guys compare. While the results here are not anything too out of the ordinary, I did expect the 7790 to maybe have worse frame times, considering it only has one gigabyte of VRAM, but this uh, program in Windows handled it pretty well. The UHD 630 did surprise me a bit. Um, I know it didn't come close to the 7790 as it scored 1916 and the 630 scored 1035, but the UHD 630 did beat out the Terascale based cards, which is, uh, or Ne nearly match it, which is uh, very surprising. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put up the results here for all the cards tested so you can see what everything looks like. So starting from the top, the 390 is about two and a half percent faster than the 780. The 7970 gigahertz edition is about 43% faster than the 670. And the GTX 580 ends up being about 90% faster than the 6950 that was clocked at the same clock speeds as the 6970. And the GTX 480 is about 48% faster than the HD 5870. And the 7790 end up being about 85% faster than the UHD 630. Um, pretty good results for the, obviously the higher end cards here, but um, Terrascale cards did not perform very well at all, uh, which isn't too surprising given their driver situation. Along with listing the scores for all the cards tested, I also measured uh, the average frame rate and the 1% and 0.1% lows as well. Now here is a, a list shows what the frame rates were. So if you're interested, uh, what the comparison looks like from a frame rate perspective. So that is it folks. I just wanted to make a quick video showing you the results 
This is uh, not a scripted video as you can tell, but again, wanted to share my results with you guys just to show you how some of these older DirectX 11 based cards hold up and uh, this new software based ray tracing benchmark. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments and feel free to download this and maybe compare some of your older cards or even newer cards to what you see here on screen. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video.